Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to share uh, how my first therapy session went. So anyone who knows me knows I'm like the most directionally challenged person ever. So I got off the bus. It said it was just a four minute walk. So you know how I should have just pressed the start button. But I'm like, oh, four minutes. And I kind of see it on the map. I'm sure I can just figure that out. And so I start walking. So I don't know. It kept looking like I was going the wrong directions. Anyways, what was supposed to be a four minute walk took me like 15 to 20 minutes. It's a good thing I left super early because I know myself, right? So when you know that you're a particular way, you find ways to <laughs> mitigate that situation. And so for me, I give myself a lot of cushion time. Um, plus buses are unreliable and you never know like if they're going to be super late and you don't want to be late for your first therapy session. Um, so I really like my therapist, um, and we are just, so the first few sessions are just kind of getting to know each other, uh, anyone who, um, is thinking about doing therapy. It's really important that you connect with your therapist. Um, you can't really, I mean, you're sharing really intimate things with, with your therapist. They're helping you process a lot of different things. And if you don't connect with your therapist, um, that, that makes it that, that much more difficult. Um, and I have talked to people who, um, got, uh, a therapist that they didn't really connect with. And I think that's why it's good to have a consultation first or just to see if you guys jive with each other. Um, but anyways, there was one point in the therapy session where, um, she had asked me a question. Okay, so you guys, anyone who also knows me knows um, that I have the tendency to talk a lot. <laughs> but there's a difference between me talking a lot with substance and me talking a lot to distract myself. And I had given her the heads up that I have the tendency when I haven't processed some feelings yet that I will talk a lot. And... Um, and it's because I'm trying to distract myself from actually fully feeling what I'm feeling. And I said, I'm going to need your, you to help stop me when I'm doing that. And so there were two points that she asked me how I was feeling as I was like super speeding talking and all that stuff that I do when I'm feeling anxious in a particular way or I haven't processed whatever I'm feeling inside. And so... Um, both times she asked me what I was feeling, like I broke down and cried. Um, because I, I, partly from f like not stopping usually to think about how I'm feeling, but also being overwhelmed about the fact that I really didn't know what I was feeling. So the second time she had stopped me was when I was sharing something that might seem like nothing to other people. So C and, C and I had been walking around Green Lake and he had stated, um, you know, when I stop you to ask you questions, it's because I want to connect with you. Okay, so not like earth shattering statement, right? But when she asked me how I felt about that, like I broke down crying. And the reason I broke down crying was because I didn't know what I was feeling at that moment. And so she gave me these cards. So I bought these cards. I found these on Amazon. It's called Mixed Emotions. And <laughs> it was like a whole slew of mixed emotions. And I can't remember all of them at the top of my head. But the first one I chose was overwhelmed. And then I think I chose like afraid and panicky and um, resistant, but sur also surprised and hopeful. Um, just a variety of emotions. It was just, I think that it's rare for me to have people that probe into my life, like in a meaningful way. Um, I've been used to being the one who serves people. And sometimes when you're in service to other people, they're not curious. Um, they just presume you got it all together and that everything's okay. And it's easy for me to sometimes feel that way because I've learned to kind of muffle what I'm actually feeling. So we're going to go hopefully more into like family of origin stuff and um, a little bit more of like the patterns and, and whatnot that have created these things. So because I'm wanting to work on attachment theory, 
um, that's an indefinite indefinite amount of time um, being worked through. So I'm my goal is to move from anxious, preoccupied to secure, earn secure attachment. Um, though we did talk about the reality that there's a little bit of, of avoidant with me. Um, so when it was an interesting time because I think when I started getting closer to C, like I felt almost scared. And I think I did a lot of self-sabotaging things at that time because I didn't know how to process caring about this person. You know, when you, um, you know, when you absolutely like want something and then you get closer to having that, that's really like, it, 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 it conjures up a lot of different fears that you didn't ha know you had. Um, and I don't think I, there is a sense of, there's a, a deep sense of vulnerability um, there that I don't know I was if I was ready to really allow myself to journey into, you know? Um, so I think that's, that's why I did um, do a lot of self-sabotaging stuff, just a lot of being afraid. I wasn't afraid in the beginning. He made me feel very safe and he still makes me feel safe. You know, we're still good. Um, but it's just that I think internally I was freaking out and he was, I think in his own ways and, and he displayed it too. So yeah, two people who want to be close to people, but also at the same time, doing things that distance ourselves from each other. So it's a weird dynamics when two people want to be close to each other, but at the same time are scared to get close to each other and do things to make sure that there's a some distance from getting too close. Um, and I, I, I need to unpack that for myself. Um, so it was a really good first session. I'm going to be seeing her weekly again, for an indefinite amount of time. And I'm going to have to figure out um, how I'm going to work it because I get eight free sessions with my work. But after that, it will be out of pocket and she's out of network. So that would be like 35% I would be responsible for. But I would have to pay everything up front because um, they she doesn't, her particular place does not bill insurance. Um, but again, it, to me, it's more important that I connect with my therapist. And um, I mean, who knows, maybe once the eight sessions are up, you know, we might suggest going elsewhere, um, if she knows anyone that, you know, has my insurance company, but, but I, I, I think I'll just make it work because, uh, especially after eight sessions, I, I would feel like I'm in a, a good spot with her. I don't want to really start with another person. I'm kind of that person <laughs> that has a hard time restarting with another person once I really connect with somebody. Um, but just to say... I just really encourage people uh, to destigmatize therapy and to stop thinking that uh, therapy is just for quote unquote messed up people. Um, there is a lot in us as a society that has not learned how to process things. Um, our, as a society, we almost don't encourage people to to understand where our reactions are coming from. Our country right now is very reactionary. Nobody's looking into themselves and figuring out like, what, why am I acting this way? <laughs> you know, when we don't listen to each other, when we don't care about each other, when we don't love each other, that's a reflection of our own lack of journey inside of ourselves. Like if we don't know how to love other people, we typically don't love ourselves. In our society right now shows a lot of self-hatred that is being shown outward to other people. And I think that we would benefit the whole country and not our own, I mean, obviously ourselves first and foremost. Um, but when we are right, um, the world becomes a better place um, if we do do the work. and and. The reality sometimes we know 
that we need to do some work in our own hearts, but we're not willing to put in the work. And for those that are Christians, like myself, who have had stigma around uh, therapy, um, first of all, there are therapists that are also Christians um, because they know that it's not mutually exclusive. This idea that therapy is only for for people who don't have Jesus, it's kind of like a weird sentiment. You know, the act of confession or the act of being honest with ourselves and being with honest with other people, like that's very biblical in a lot of ways. And so I feel like sometimes it's easy to go, oh, I just confess to God and everything's okay. But, you know, in scripture, it also says confessing to each other. So obviously some people are like, well, a therapist is not the person I need to confess to. Uh, no not per se, but somebody who is able to take you on your journey to understand yourself better. So you are able to actually have better relationships with people, which is the like heart of loving other people. I guess my, my whole point is just, I wish that Christians did not look so negatively at therapy and think that somehow is the opposite of having Jesus because that's not true. It's really not true. I have Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus is good to me. And this is one of the tools that God is using in my life to heal me. And God is a healer. And so um, let's not, it's kind of like reminding ourselves that the majority of Christians don't think it's crazy to take medicine or to see a doctor. Why is it different when it comes to our mental health? I'm just, I'm just asking you guys to consider it. And um, <laughs> to be honest, I feel like majority of people as need to go to therapy as a family, not just as an individual, as a family, because there's a lot of, if I could, if I could somehow miraculously convince my family, I would have my whole family go to therapy. There's a lot of things that... Um, needs to be really spoken and healed in our family. And I had a good childhood, don't get me wrong, and my parents are great, uh, but there's a lot of pain, um, a lot of unprocessed things that happen. And, and I don't think it value, it's, it's, it's beneficial to anybody to just sweep things under the rug and say, hey, it's been years, it's lo so long ago, let's just move on. That's not how it works. Our bodies remember and it acts out in ways that we sometimes don't understand because we've learned to bury them for so long. And for some people, burying things is how they prefer to do it. They're like, well, it works. Burying my emotions works because I've survived and I'm strong and I, I can do all this stuff. But what they don't understand is sometimes they're harming other people in the in their attempts to seem strong um, or to be strong. So, um, quote unquote. So I'm just, I'm excited for more therapy work. Um, and I hope that other Christians um, who understand that there's stuff to be worked on would be willing to consider it and um, stop stigmatizing it, but stop, start understanding that it's is another gift um, that God has chosen to give us in this world. Anyways, that's it. Bye.